Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, we're making a gingerbread sign. For my sign, I'm using a wood frame blank that I got from an online craft store. I will link it below. I want to stain the border of this frame. So I'm going to put a little bit of Dixie Belle's chocolate chalk mineral paint into a little plastic container. And then I'm using some water to water it down. So we're basically creating a paint wash to stain the frame. I'm then going to add that wash to my frame. And then I'm using a paper towel to wipe back some of the excess and I'm going to continue to add this to the frame until I have the entire piece covered. Remember you can find a full product list in the description below and most of these products on our website theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. I'm using a paint wash to stain my frame today, but of course you can use a traditional stain to do this or perhaps a glaze in a similar tone to what you're looking for. Once the frame is dry, I'm going to use some masking tape to tape off the frame. I don't want to get any paint on the area we just stained. And then I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint in the center. And it's going to take two coats to get the coverage that I want. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm keeping my brush strokes nice and even and straight. I can change directions, of course, when I'm trying to get into some tricky areas, but always go back with a smoothing stroke of your brush to keep those lines even and the application of your paint even. And once my paint has completely dried, I'm going to pull the tape away and then I'm going to set my sign aside so that we can get started on the next part of the project. Next, I'm using IOD's Ginger and Spice Mold. This is from their Christmas release this year. And I'm using Amazing Casting Resin. I've poured out equal parts A and B into a silicone cup, and I'm going to stir it really well for about 30 seconds. I'm then going to carefully pour that resin into my mold, and it's gonna take about 10 minutes for it to become opaque and ready to come out. I'm then going to be using IOD's O Christmas Tree Mold and I'm pouring some resin into the lovely garlands that come with that one. That's also from this year's holiday release. Now I am using resin, but you could definitely use clay. I'm then going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Pumpkin Spice Limited Edition Fall Color and I'm mixing in a little bit of Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint just to deepen that tone. And I'm going to be applying that to the gingerbread people's heads and hands and feet. As I'm doing this, I'm not too worried if I go outside those particular areas because we are going to be putting other colors over the top of that. And of course, it's up to you what color you decide to go with to paint your gingerbread people. It really is up to you and whatever look you're going for. As I said, I wanted a little bit of a deeper tone here. So that chocolate added to the pumpkin spice mix really helped. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat to seal over those sections so that if I make a mistake when I add the color, I can always use a wet wipe to wipe back the error. I'm then going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Savannah Mist to go over the top of the little boy's overalls. I just have a small artist brush that I'm using here and I'm definitely going to be sticking with some pastel colors. We're going for a very soft look here. I'm then going to be using the same pale blue to go over the top of the gingerbread man's lovely sweater. And again, I'm working that paint in, but I also don't want the paint to pull, so I'm being careful not to do that as well. For the gingerbread man's pants, I'm using Dixie Belle's Lemonade Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a lovely soft yellow. I'll also be adding that same yellow to the little bow tie. 
I'm then going to add some more of that yellow to our little gingerbread boy, to his buttons, to the little cuffs on the pants, and to the detail on the pocket. I'm then using some of Dixie Belle's Tea Rose chalk mineral paint. This is a lovely pale pink, and I'm adding it to the little gingerbread girl's dress, and I'm also going to add it to the sweet bow on her head. I'm then using that same pink on the gingerbread lady's dress. And this had a lot of details on it. These molds are so detailed and beautiful. And I'm just working my paint into all of those tricky areas. And then I'm going to be using some of that buttercream on the gingerbread man's buttons. So I'm just carefully going in there and painting those. And then I'm also going to be using that same white on the end of a paintbrush to add some little dots of paint to the polka dots on the little girl's dress and then I'm also adding it to the little buttons on her dress as well. I'm then adding buttercream to the gingerbread lady's buttons, the little collar around the top of her dress and also to the little details on the arms of her dress and then I'm also going to be adding it to the eyes of all the gingerbread men. This is a little bit tricky, so I did go between using the end of the paintbrush and the smaller bristles of the paintbrush. I wasn't too worried if they didn't look that great to start off with because when we come in and add the black, it will all start to tie together. So now I'm gonna go in and I've got some of Dixie Belle's coffee bean on the end of a paintbrush and I'm using that to do the pupils of the eyes on each of the gingerbread men. And then once those are dry, I'm then using the same paint to do the gingerbread lady's eyelashes. And then I'm adding some of the buttercream chalk mineral paint on the end of a paintbrush over the top of those little black dots that we did. I'm also using the buttercream on the eyebrows of each of the gingerbread men and also on the noses as well. I think that's a really cute detail. I'm then using that tea rose pink on the end of a paintbrush to do the lips of each of the gingerbread people and also to do some sweet little round circles on each of the cheeks. I think again, this is a really sweet touch. When I'm finished adding those details, I'll seal this with the gloss clear coat. I'm then adding Dixie Belle's Juniper to the garlands that we cast from the O Christmas tree mold and I'm going to be adding that paint to each of our four pieces. Once the Juniper is dry, I will seal each of these with gloss clear coat as well. We're going for a very soft look here. So I'm using Dixie Belle's whitewash glaze over the top of our gingerbread men and I'm just adding it on and then I'm going to wipe it off with a paper towel and also a wet wipe in any areas that it's being a bit stubborn. And this is, as I said, going to give it a really soft look. It might even look a little bit like flour or dusted sugar. And again, this will be personal preference whether you add this or not. I'm going to be adding it to each of the pieces and I'm just working in sections so that the glaze doesn't dry too quick for me to be able to wipe it back. If you don't have this glaze, another option could be a white paint wash or a white wax. If the whitewashed and glazed look isn't for you, you could go in a different route and you could add an antiquing glaze instead to give it more of an old world feel. It would just depend what look you're trying to achieve. Once I've added it to all of the gingerbread people, I'm also adding that same whitewash glaze to our lovely green garlands. These have already been sealed with the gloss clear coat, so I'm able to add the product and wipe back the excess. When the glaze is dry, I'm going to come in with some more of the gloss clear coat and I'm just dabbing some of that product onto each of our garlands. This is going to act as a glue for our next step. I'm then using some glitter on each of the little garlands. I'm just using the end of a plastic spoon to scoop up a little bit of the glitter and then I'm tapping some of that out and I've got it on top of a plastic sheet to make cleanup a little bit easier. 
I then decided that I wanted to add some of these little snowflakes. I had already precast these. They are from IOD's Blitz Mold, which was from last year's holiday release. I'm just adding that gingerbread paint mixture that we created, and then I'm going to let these dry. When the snowflakes are dry, I'm going to take some of that buttercream chalk mineral paint and I'm going to just start dabbing on some of that paint. And I'm just catching a lot of the high points, a lot of the details, and this is going to give us that classic gingerbread look. While all of my resin pieces are drying, I'm going to focus on the sign. I'm going to be using IOD's Barnwood Planks stamp and I'm inking up just part of the stamp and I'm going to position it up the top and then press down. I don't need a perfect impression here. I really want it to look like old fence posts or old barnwood boards in the background. We don't need it to be perfect. I actually want it to be a little bit more subdued and I want it to have four planks so you can see that that I've just positioned each of the lines there and then I am pressing down. I wanna turn this down a little bit so I'm just gonna do some dry brushing. I've got a little bit of the buttercream chalk mineral paint on my paintbrush and I'm just lightly going over the top of my dry ink to tone it down. I'm then going to be adding this Gingerbread Baking Co. stencil design. I will link this down in the description. I'm just using a JRV half inch stencil brush. I'm dabbing my brush into my Dixie Belle Coffee Bean Chalk Mineral Paint, and then I am dabbing on that paint over the top of my stencil. And I'm just holding my stencil in place with my hand. You can always tape this in place if you're a bit worried about it shifting. Just always remember to offload that brush so that you reduce any risk of bleeding underneath that stencil. When my paint is dry, I'm going to start positioning my resin pieces. So I'm positioning the gingerbread people down the bottom underneath our stenciling that we did. I'm then adding our greenery in the corners. And then I'm also going to be adding those little snowflakes in the background on each side of our little gingerbread people. And then I'm going to start gluing them down. I'm just using a hot glue gun to do this. You could also use super glue if you like or wood glue. I think those options would take a little bit longer for your pieces to adhere. So I'm just going to work my way around until I have everything glued down. If you're looking for more Christmas craft ideas, make sure you check out my other Christmas playlists. I have a lot of ideas for the festive season. These molds were so fun to use. Let me know in the comments if you've used the new ginger and spice mold. Once I had just about everything glued down, I still felt like there was something missing in the corners. So I went into my resin stash and I got these little trees out. These are from IOD's Boughs of Holly holiday mold. This one is not made anymore, unfortunately, guys. You could probably find a IOD retailer that perhaps does castings of them though. And then I'm also going to be using these little bauble decorations that I got and I will link this mold down in the description as well. So I'm just adding that gingerbread paint that we created earlier and then when that's dry I'm going to get some of that buttercream on the end of my paintbrush and I'm just dabbing some little dots onto my trees. I want these to look a little bit like ornaments on the tips of the leaves and then I'm going to be using a little bit of paint to go over the top of the details on the little baubles and I'm also going to do a little bit of dry brushing over the top. Again we want this to tie in with the gingerbread people that we've already created and also the little uh, snowflake gingerbread pieces that we created as well. Once my paint has completely dried, I'm going to use my hot glue gun to attach those pieces in the corner. So I'm putting the little trees down on the bottom garlands, down in the bottom corners, and then I'm adding the Christmas baubles in the top right and top left hand corners.
I'm then going to take my artist brush and I'm going to be dipping it into the Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic. So I'm just using the end of my paintbrush, dipping it into the product and then dabbing it onto our greenery. So again, I want this to look like little decorations in those garlands and this is a very subtle but effective look. You could definitely do them as red berries if you wanted. If you want to introduce that color, it's up to you. I then decided to take my buttercream brush and I'm just dry brushing some of that creamy paint over the frame that we created. I don't want this to be too dark, but I feel like this will tie in a little bit better with the other elements that we have going on here. So I'm going to dry brush that on anywhere that it's a little bit heavy. I'm using a baby wipe to wipe it back because I have already sealed our frame. And then I'm going to also be taking that same brush and lightly going over the top of my text just to give it a bit of a subdued, rustic, weathered look. And then of course, this will be sealed with Rust Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and I'll attach a hanger to the back. And here's our finished gingerbread sign. I love how this turned out. Those molds were so fun to work with and they all work so well together. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.